friends today let us learn about two casting process one is the evaporative pattern casting and the other one is the plaster molding so first let us learn about evaporative pattern casting and then we will see the plaster molding process first let us see the evaporative pattern casting what is this evaporative pattern casting this is also known as expendable pattern casting and this is also known as last foam casting and let us see before going to the what is a principle involved in this process let us see the history so the first patent for an evaporative pattern casting process was filed in april 1956 by harold f stroyer so in his patent a patent was a pattern was machined from a block of expendable pattern polished in pattern and it was supported by traditional green sand during process during pouring process here we can see the pattern was supported by traditional green sand and this process is now known as full molding process but later some modifications were done and we will see them later and in 1964 mc flemings used unbonded sand for this process you see here the first person the herald shoyer used what say traditional green sand for supporting the pattern whereas in 1964 mc flemings used unbounded clean and dry sand for supporting the pattern so that way the second step was different from the earlier process robinson foundry at alexander city alabama was the first north american foundry to use evaporative pattern casting process general motors used this process to produce the 4.3 liters v6 diesel cylinder head during 1981 a study found in 1997 that this process accounted for approximately 140000 tons of aluminum castings in the united states now let us see the principle of this evaporative pattern casting process so here the pattern is made up of polystyrene or styrofoam so this is the polystyrene pattern or the styrofoam pattern and here we can see the pouring cup is there and this is the sprue and the whole thing is the pattern whose shape is similar to the casting which we want now we have to make a ceramic slurry or a refractory slurry such that when we apply a coating around this pattern there will be uh, what say micro what say pores will be there so that uh, uh, permeability will be better during pouring hot gases can escape so it is coated with gas permeable refractory slurry and then it is dried then what happens hard shell thin hard shell around the pattern is created now you see here we have to take a molding box only one molding box not two boxes inside the molding box we have to place the pattern remember this pattern is already coated with a refractory slurry means a thin coating is created now that pattern we have to place inside the molding box then sand is packed around the pattern dry sand is packed around the pattern it should be what say packed then what happens sand support is created around the pattern then what will happen molten metal is poured into the portion of the pattern that forms the pouring cup and sprue and here we can see this whole thing is the pattern and this is the pouring cup so this process uh, is somewhat different from the other process in one sense that in all the previous process so before pouring the molten metal we remove the withdraw the pattern from the mold but here the most specialized uh, special feature is that we won't remove the pattern from the mold without removing or withdrawing the pattern from the mold we start pouring the molten metal so that is the most interesting feature of this process now molten metal is poured into the portion of the pattern that forms the pouring cup and sprue so here we pour the we start pouring the molten metal then what will happen as the molten metal enters the mold the polystyrene foam is vaporized ahead of the advancing liquid one side molten metal is coming and it is falling on the what say polystyrene pattern or the evaporative pattern then what will happen within fraction of seconds 
this pattern will be evaporating. So, it will be going in another way. One way it is coming and another way the vapor is going out. Thus, so as we keep pouring more and more metal, more and more pattern will be evaporated and it will be escaping. How long this will continue? Till the entire pattern is evaporated, we have to keep pouring the molten metal and till the entire cavity is filled with the molten metal. Now, the resulting mold cavity is filled with the molten metal. Yes, the pouring looks like this. Now, after that the metal is cooled and solidified. The shell is broken and the part comes out. Means after that uh, even we remove the molding box, then we what say this sand, it is not what say sand mixed with the clay. So, no need to break it as we do it in this case of the green sand. The automatically once we remove the molding box, even the sand just falls down because it is clean and dry sand. Then this shell is to be broken. This shell is to be the thin shell which is which we created around the pattern should be broken. Then what happens? The part comes out, the casting comes out. Now, these are the advantages of evaporative pattern casting used for precision castings of ferrous and non-ferrous metals. Both ferrous and non-ferrous metals can be cast using this uh, evaporative pattern casting and uh, not only that very precision castings can be made precision means uh, with extreme what say dimensional accuracy and very good surface finish and complex shapes can be uh, obtained. Next one high dimensional accuracy can be achieved, thin sections can be cast. So, this uh, is a special feature which we have seen in the case of the investment casting process, but investment casting process is a time taking process and this process takes less time and here also we can obtain the thin sections. Next one complex shapes can be cast. So, this is also a special feature which we which we can see in the case of the investment casting process. So, here also we can make the complex shaped components, but with less time. Now, another advantage is one piece flask less expensive and easier. In the case of the green sand molding, generally we use two boxes, sometimes even three boxes. One is the lower molding box that is known as the drag the upper molding box is known as the cope. So, these two boxes must be assembled carefully otherwise there will be some mismatch will be there, but here there is no such problem there is no mismatch between the cope and drag. First of all there are no two molding boxes there is only one molding box is there. So, there is no question of mismatch and also the assembly time that will be eliminated. Next one fewer steps are involved compared to the sand casting process. In the case of the sand casting process, we have to prepare the molding sand, we have to mix the additives, we have to mix the clay, we have to mix the water and that should be mulled for a predetermined time. Then we have to uh, carry it to the molding shop, then we have to make the mold and it should be compacted, then it should be pattern must be withdrawn very carefully. Again the two molding block boxes should be assembled. So, so much of time is involved in the case of the green sand molding process. Here very few steps are involved just to make the what say polystyrene pattern then make a what say coating around that and pack it inside the molding box start pouring that very simple. No need to mix binders or additives. So, in the case of the green sand molding process we mix the binders and additives. What happens when we mix binders and additives? So, these cause pollution inside the plant whereas, in the case of the evaporative pattern casting we do not mix binders or additives. So, as a result there will be clean environment within the plant. Next one multiple castings can be combined in one mold to increase pouring efficiency. Suppose if we are want to small castings, so suppose we want to say 4 or 5 small castings, so no need to make 5 what say molds. So, all these can be joined together, assembled together for all these what say 4 patterns they all can be what say kept inside a single molding box and it can be compacted with the sand then simultaneously molten metal can be poured means simultaneously we can get castings of 4 or 5 castings. So, no need for skilled labor, once there are skilled labor they will be demanding higher remuneration. Next one fettling and machining is minimized. So, this is another drawback in the case of the 
greens and molding. Fettling means after the solidification is over, right? We have to break the sand. So that is the shake out. Then metal will be solidified inside the riser. Metal will be solidified in the sprue and in the gating system. So this must be cut off. So that is the fettling process. So the, sometimes what say labor have to be used for that pur purpose or uh, what say heavy machines have to be used and uh, that consumes time. So that is minimized or eliminated in the case of the evaporative pattern casting. Now high levels of sand reuse are possible. In the case of the green sand molding, so the sand cannot be used for infinite times, only it can be used for certain number of what say molds, after that it has to be discarded. Whereas here, thus we are using dry sand, so high levels of sand reuse are possible. Next one, no need to remove the pattern. In the case of the green sand molding, we withdraw the pattern, for that a skilled labor is required very carefully he used to withdraw the pattern. So, that requires skill, not only that, that takes time, sometimes this is done by machines. So, these machines are expensive. So, here there is no need to remove the pattern, while the pattern is still inside the mold, we keep pouring the molten metal. As we keep pouring the molten metal, the pattern evaporates and escapes from the uh, other, uh, other side. So, no need to remove the pattern. Now, lower capital investment, we do not require heavy equipments for this process. So, this is, these are the advantages of the evaporative pattern casting process. Now, let us see there are drawbacks also. What are the drawbacks of evaporative pattern casting? The pattern is expensive. Next one, every casting requires a separate pattern and the process becomes costly. In the case of the sand casting process, most of the times we use wooden, we use a wooden pattern or a metallic pattern. So, those patterns can be used for making thousands of what say castings, but here one pattern can be used to make only one casting. So, that is a drawback. The pattern evaporates and it is not reusable. In the case of the green sand molding, the same pattern can be used for making several molds or for getting several castings and here it is not possible. Even in the case of the investment casting, for each what say casting we make a wax pattern, but that wax can be recovered, the same wax can be melted and it can be used for making another wax pattern. So, that way in, in the investment casting process the wax is reusable, whereas in the case of the evaporative pattern casting the pattern is not reusable. Why? because it is evaporating. As the sand is unbounded, sand may fall down during pouring. So, here in the case of the what say the first person the shroyer, he has used the green sand, but later people started using the unbounded sand. So, this unbounded sand sometimes it may fall down during pouring, the, in that be the case a defective casting will arise. In addition to this, what are the other drawbacks? So, during pouring of the molten metal, the pattern evaporates and it escapes through the pouring cup only. What is that? That these fumes will cause what say environmental pollution. So, this is another drawback of this evaporative pattern casting process. Now, these are the applications of evaporative pattern casting used to manufacture crank shafts for engines, aluminum engine blocks, manifolds, and so on. In fact, Nowadays, evaporative pattern casting is used for more and more applications. Now, here we see a what is a real application for making engine block. So, this is the engine block. So, here we can see metal is poured into mold for a last form casting of a 60 HP 3 cylinder marine engine. Here we can see only one mold box is there, only one molding box, and this is the pouring cup and the molten metal is being poured and as it is being poured, the vapor escapes and finally, uh, it fills. After solidification, we have to re what say remove this uh, box and we have to remove the sand, then we have to break the what say shell, a thin shell which we have created with the ceramic slurry, refractory slurry, then finally, we get a casting like this. So, this is a real practical application of the evaporative pattern casting. 
Now, these are the types of evaporative pattern casting. So, in this evaporative pattern casting process, EPS polystyrene foam or the thermocol is used as the pattern material. Now, broadly this can be classified into three types. One is the last foam process means this is the one which is widely used nowadays. The second one is the full mold process which was used in the beginning, but now also it is used. And finally, the ceramic shell process. Now, we will see all these one by one very briefly. Now, what is this last foam process? The pattern is packed with the dry sand. Sometime just now I told you this process is widely used nowadays. So, in this process no doubt the pattern is made up of the evaporative pattern. right? So, but after making the ceramic shell around the pattern, the pattern is packed with the dry sand. In the case of the full mold process, the pattern is packed with the green sand molding process. So, that way this is a combination with green sand molding. And let us see what is the ceramic shell. So, this is a combination with investment casting process. Means what is that? Here in the case of the investment casting process, we make a what is a ceramic shell, thick ceramic shell around the wax pattern. And uh, that too, this ceramic shell is made say 5 to 7 times a coating is given, a refined refractory slurry is made and the wax pattern will be dipped into that and it will be taken out and a stucco is rained on that, again it will be dried, then again it will be dipped into the slurry, taken out, stucco is sprinkled on that and it will be dried. Like that, this process will be continued for 5 to 7 times, means 5 to 7 times this will be dipped in the ceramic slurry and it will be dried. In the same way, here also a yes, thick shell is created around the polystyrene pattern, evaporative pattern. Then the what say we keep pouring the molten metal. So, it is a combination with the investment casting process. So, these are the three types of the what say evaporative pattern casting process. Now, the steps in processing of the polystyrene pattern. So, these are the steps for processing the polystyrene pattern. One is the first step is the pre expansion. Second step is maturing, third step is final molding, fourth step is polystyrene pattern assembly. Now, let us see what are these. In the case of the pre expansion, tiny spherical polystyrene beads are expanded to about 40 times their original size using a small quantity of pentane and its proportion is 5 percent by weight as a blowing agent. Now, the second step is the maturing. What is this? As the material cools, the pentane liquefies and a partial vacuum is formed inside the bead. Next one, the third step is the final molding. In this final stage, the pre expanded stabilized beads are reheated with steam in a mold. And the next step is the polystyrene pattern assembly. In this process, the pattern is assembled by gluing polystyrene foam runners and risers. Sometimes even if the size of the casting is small, several patterns are joined together and assembled. So, that comes under the polystyrene pattern assembly. Now, these are the steps involved in the evaporative pattern casting process. First step is make the dye. Second step, pattern expands, pre-expanded what is a pattern, pre-expand pattern beads. First step is making the dye, second step is pre-expand pattern beads. Next one, fill and expand patterns. Third step, assemble patterns. Fourth step, dip and dry cluster. We have to make the ceramic slurry. So, in that ceramic slurry, the assembly or the pattern will be dipped and it will be clustered. Clustered means what? If there are several patterns, they will be assembled together. If it is a single pattern, as a, what is a riser and a sprue are to be glued. So, that also comes under this clustering. Next one, invest cluster. So, we have to make the ceramic what is a shell around that. Next one, pouring. While pouring, the what is a pattern evaporates and comes out and molten metal fills that mold and it solidifies. Next step is cut off. If there are more castings, multiple castings, so this should be cut off 
and if it, even if it is a single casting, the razor and the sprue must be cut off. Next step is the inspect castings. Finally, shipment of the castings. Now, let us see a comparison between last wax process and the evaporative pattern casting process. Last wax process means it is the investment casting process and here this is our present uh, topic the evaporative pattern casting process. In what way these can be compared and which one is better? Let us see. Now, composition of pattern, first uh, what is a comparison? In the case of the last wax process or the investment casting process, the pattern is made up of wax blends. Wax, uh, generally uh, this uh, a single wax is not used, several waxes are mixed together and a blend is made. So, pattern is made up of wax blends. Whereas, in the case of the evaporative pattern casting, the pattern is made up of expandable, expanded polystyrene foam. Next one, the next comparison is the density of material used for pattern. In the case of the what is the investment casting process, density of wax patterns is 700 cases per cubic meter. What happens? If that be the case, the patterns will be very heavy handling of the patterns would be difficult. Whereas, in the case of the evaporative pattern casting, density of expanded polystyrene patterns is 42 kg per cubic meter. The weight of the pattern or the density of the pattern is drastically reduced in the case of the evaporative pattern casting process. Sufficient for strong, because the weight is less, because the density is less does not mean that uh, the pattern is too delicate they are strong enough, sturdy, dimensionally accurate and light patterns. Now, next comparison is maximum weight of the cast part. It is well below 500 cases, even 500 cases nowadays is the extreme case, but in the case of the evaporative pattern casting process, no limitation of weight of the cast part. Next one, preheating of the ceramic shell. In the case of the last wax, it is required sometimes what will happen during preheating the ceramic shell can crack. Whereas, in the case of the evaporative pattern casting process, pouring is possible at room temperature, no need for preheating the shell. Next one, rejection of shell during the process. In the case of the last wax process or the investment casting process, so the ceramic shell has a tendency to crack due to the expansion of the wax. Whereas, in the case of the evaporative pattern casting process, do you think that that expansion of the shell takes place or the expansion of the polyester takes place? No, because without what is a, any preheating, we straight away pour the molten metal. As the molten metal is entering into the what is a mold, the pattern evaporates and escapes. So, there is no question of the expansion of the shell. So, no question of the cracking of the shell. So, no question of rejection of the shell during the process. Next one, methoding. In the case of the last wax process, it is, it is difficult and has limitations in addition to the problem of razor back filling. In the case of the evaporative pattern casting, flexible razors are simply glued on the pattern to shoot the methoding. The feeding ability of razor is improved with the use of exothermic sleeves. Next one, in the case of the last wax process, the ceramic shell thickness is 10 to 15 mm. Means, uh, to make this 10 to 15 mm thickness of shell, we have to mix, mix what is a dip the wax pattern into the ceramic slurry 5 to 7 times. Again, generally people make say 2 types of the slurries. So, one is the extremely fine slurry and another one is the coarser slurry. Initially, one has to dip the pattern into the fine slurry, then into the coarser slurry. Every time one ha it has to be taken out and the what is a stucco has to be sprinkled, it has to be dried out, again it has to be dipped into the slurry. So, it is a time taking process. This process takes lot of time, several hours of time. Whereas, here the shell thickness is only 5 to 10 mm depending on the size of the component. And in the case of the investment casting process, to achieve this 10 to 15 mm thickness, several hours are required. That much time is not required in the case of the evaporative pattern casting process. 
So far we have seen uh, several comparisons. In all these comparisons, we have seen that evaporative pattern casting is superior to the investment casting process or the lost wax process. Now, what are the process parameters of the evaporative pattern casting process? So, these are the there are five types of the parameters. First type is the molding sand based variables, second one is the vibration based variables, third one is the vacuum based variables, fourth one is the pouring material based variables, fifth one pattern based variables, sixth one coating based variables and in the first one that is the molding sand based variables, type of molding sand, shape, size and size distribution. What is the shape? Is it angular, subangular or round? So, that is the shape of the what says molding sand and the size, what is the mesh size and size distribution. So, these come under the molding sand based variables. Next one, vibration based variables, frequency, amplitude of vibration and time of vibration. So, after the sand is compacted inside the sand what is a molding box, so it is vibrated so that sand settles down inside the molding box because it is not a green sand, it is dry sand. So, that is why it is given vibrations. Now, the frequency of that vibration, amplitude of the vibration and time of the vibration, these come under the vibration based variables. Next one, vacuum based variables, degree of vacuum imposed. So, that, that is the only variable in among the, under the vacuum based variables. Next one, pouring material what is a based variables, pouring time and temperature. Next one, pattern based variables, density and size of the polystyrene beads. Finally, coating based variables, material slurry and the thickness and uh, the dry what is a drying time. So, these are all the process uh, what is a parameters of the evaporative pattern casting process. So, with this we are completing the evaporative pattern casting process. Now, uh, let us see the uh, plaster molding. Now, before learning the plaster molding, let us see the history. Plaster molding, right? Plaster has been used throughout the ancient history in the Egyptian, Greek and Roman civilizations. Primitive plastering was carried out using clay and mud to keep out the cold and wet. Plaster mouldings have been used for classical architectural design from the ancient Greeks. Now, following the fire of London Bridge in the year 1912, King John ordered that all shops, brewers and bakers should have their walls plastered inside and outside to make them safe from fire. So, from this we can see this plaster has been used for centuries for several purposes. During 17th century, decorative plaster mouldings were created, art items, these were created. After 18,000 AD, gypsum or plaster of Paris became more common. So, in the beginning, what was the material used? So, it, the it, they, people have used clay and mud as the plastering material, but later you can see in the 1800 AD, gypsum or plaster of Paris became more common. Gypsum is a mineral calcium sulphate which is a common form of sedimentary rock used to make plaster by heating it to 150 degrees Celsius and then grinding it to into a powder. Plaster of Paris is called plaster of Paris because around Paris there were large deposits of gypsum used to make this, make this plaster that is why it is known as the plaster of Paris. Now, in the case of the plaster molding, what is the molding material? The molding material is just like in the case of the green sand molding, what is the mold material? It is the green sand. Similarly, in the case of the plaster molding, the molding material is plaster of Paris or it is the gypsum commercially and chemically it is the calcium sulphate. Now, what is the material of the pattern? Aluminum alloys, brass or zinc alloys. Sometimes plastic is used and rarely wood also used. Now, there are three types of what is a process under plaster molding. One is the 
conventional plaster mold process. Second one is the formed plaster process. Third one the Antioch process. We will see all these one by one. First let us see the conventional plaster mold process. Now, in this process suppose this is the component to be made. So, this what is a pattern should be like this a metallic pattern or a wooden pattern should be like this. So, this is the pattern. Now, prepare the slurry by mixing plaster of Paris with water. So, that is the first step in the conventional plaster molding process. Now, plaster of Paris and water proportions are 5 is to 8 means plaster of Paris should be 5 parts and water should be 8 parts. So, prepare that slurry by mixing these two ingredients. Second step sprinkle talcum powder over the pattern. So, this is the pattern over the pattern sprinkle talcum powder. So, that the slurry may not be sticking to the pattern. Next one apply potting agent tincture or mold soap over the pattern. So, this also will enable us to prevent the sticking of the slurry with the pattern. Now, place the pattern inside the molding box. So, this is the molding box inside this molding box place the pattern. Now, pour the plaster slurry over the pattern in the drag. So, inside there is already pattern. Now, around the pattern we have placed the molding box. Now, pour the plaster, plaster slurry over the pattern in the drag molding box. Now, this plaster will be setting in few minutes. After that the on the four sides there are four what say boxes are there. right? So, these must be separated. Next one pour the slurry in the cope. In the similar way we have to make the cope also. Now, again four boxes will be kept. Now, pour the slurry in the cope. Separate the boxes after the setting. Now, you see this is the mold. Now, scrap off any plaster that might have run down. If any plaster is unnecessarily occupying anywhere that must be scrapped off or that must be broken and eliminated. Separate these two offs of the plaster molds. So, these must be separated. Now, pattern is still inside you can see. Now, withdraw the pattern from the plaster molds. This pattern is withdrawn using a screwdriver or some what is appropriate tool. Bake the molds in an oven at 120 degrees centigrade for about 20 hours. So, this must be baked so that the moisture will be evaporating and also the plaster molds will be hardened. Assemble the molds and clamp them. After that, these two molds must be assembled and they must be clamped together. Pour the molten metal into the cavity. After pouring, after right, after solidification, remove the solidified casting using high pressure water jet. Now, these are the advantages of the conventional plaster molding process. First one is complex shapes can be cast, successfully cast. So, this feature we can see only in what is investment casting or die casting. So, here complex shapes can be easily cast and offers excellent surface finish. Next one minimum machining is required, fine details can be obtained. Next one thin sections can be cast as small as 0.6 millimeters and this process offers good dimensional tolerance. Setting of mold takes less time, less than 15 minutes time. Now, what are the limitations of conventional molding process? Not suitable for ferrous castings. The sulphur in gypsum reacts with iron and results in defects. So, this gypsum contains sulphur. So, because of that there will be some defects will be there. So, not suitable for making ferrous castings. More expensive than sand castings. In the case of the sand castings, the same sand can be used for making several castings. Whereas, in the case of the plaster molding, we have to use the plaster of Paris and once we use it that is all, we have to break it and that cannot be used again. So, it is more expensive than the sand castings, not suitable for large castings 30 grams to 7 kgs. Whereas, in the case of the sand castings, even 10 tons castings are nowadays made using sand castings. Plaster is not reusable, so that increases the cost of the production. Next one 
baking cost is extra, thermal conductivity of the plaster is poor, so slower solidification. So, the properties may be affected. Next one, low permeability, gas defects arise. What is this molding medium? It is the plaster of Paris. So, it is less permeable during pouring or during solidification, if any hot gases are arising, so they cannot escape through the molding medium. So, it is it has got the low permeability, so hence there will be gas defects. Now, let us see the second process, the foamed plaster process. The foamed plaster process is a modification of the conventional molding process, conventional plaster molding process. In the case of the conven conventional plaster molding process, the first one, what was the drawback? It has got the very less permeability, it does not allow hot gases to escape through the plaster mold. So, to overcome this what is a drawback, this limitation, some modification has been done. Finally, people arrived at the foamed plaster process. So, it is similar to the earlier one, but some modification is there. What is that? We will see. Prepare the slurry by mixing plaster of Paris with water and the plaster of Paris and water proportion is 5 is to 8, means uh, what is a proportion of the ingredients is exactly same as that of the earlier one. Blow, now here the modification comes into picture, blow air into the slurry, half of its volume should be with air bubbles. So, once it, the slurry is made, we will be blowing air into the slurry, so that there will be so many bubbles, half of the slurry is filled with the bubbles. Now, while the bubbles are still present in the slurry, pour the slurry with the bubbles over the pattern in the drag. Now, the process is similar, same way, only here the what is a variation is there, blowing air into the slurry. Now, pour the slurry with the bubbles over the pattern in the drag. Now, slurry sets in the drag box. Next one, repeat the process for the cope also, cope also can be made in the same way. Now, bake these two molds in an oven at a 120 degree centigrade for about 2 hours, to, sorry, so about 20 hours. Then what will happen? These molds, plaster molds will be hardened, then any moisture is present that will be evaporated. Now, inside there were bubbles were there. Now, what, because of that the bubbles, the air bubbles, the permeability will be enhanced, permeability of the molding medium will be enhanced. Next, assemble the molds and pour the molten metal. The process is same like the first one, only difference is here we blow the air into the slurry. Now, what are the advantages of the foamed plaster process? Good permeability, no gas defects, because we have what is a filled off of the slurry with the air bubbles, because of that the permeability is enhanced significantly. Next one, premature setting of the slurry does not arise. These are the disadvantages of the foamed plaster process. Strength of the mold is reduced. Why? In the case of the first one, the entire mold is filled with the plaster but here half of the mold is filled with the air bubbles. So, naturally the strength will be less. Next one, the setting time is more. Maximum weight of the casting is about 5 kgs, whereas in the case of the first one up to 7 kgs can be made, because here the mold's strength is less. So, only 5 kgs can be made. Finally, the third one, the anti yolk process. Now, again why this anti yolk process? Plaster of plaster, uh, what is a plaster molding is very good, it offers us very good dimensional accuracy, very good surface finish, but the only drawback is the mold or the molding medium does not have sufficient permeability, means it does not allow hot gases to escape through that. That is why people made the first what is a alteration, they mixed the what is a air into the slurry with the slurry, so they could enhance the what is a permeability, but what happened? The strength came down. So, instead of 7 cases, people were able to make only 5 cases casting. So, strength came down. So, now again this became a challenge, strength. So, we people wanted to increase the permeability and also they wanted to increase the strength. So, that is how they landed in the anti yolk process. What is this process? In this process, strength is enhanced and also the permeability is also enhanced. Now, Preparation of the slurry, first step. Now, what are the ingredients of the slurry? Fine silica sand, 50 percent. Here we use fine silica sand, whereas in the first two what is a categories, we do not use the fine silica sand. 
Now, gypsum 40 percent and talc 80 percent and Portland cement sodium silicate will be 2 percent. In addition to that, 50 per, no, water will be 50 percent of the above ingredients. You see, even the pro proportion of the ingredients is different. Here, there is a say, major difference. Fine silica sand will be 50 percent, gypsum 40 percent and talc 8 percent and this is the 2 percent. In addition to that, there will be water 50 percent of these uh, overall ingredients. Then all these will be mixed together. Now, preparation of the mold. Pour the slurry, after we prepare the slurry, pour the slurry over the pattern in the drag. In about 7 minutes, plaster develops and uh, gains good strength. Pour the slurry over the pattern in the cope also in the same way. In about 7 minutes, plaster develops and uh, get, gets good strength. Next one, withdraw the patterns from the plaster molds as usual. Now, dry the molds for 6 hours and bake in oven for 15 hours. Assemble the molds and pour the molten metal. Now, what are the advantages of Antioch process? Improved strength of the mold, larger castings can be made. Why? We are mixing 50 percent of the fine silica sand. So, because of this presence of the silica sand, the strength of the mold will be more that is how larger castings can be made. Now, incorporation of the chills is easy. Conductivity of the mold is very high. In the case of the first one, the conventional molding process we have seen, the conductivity of the mold is very poor. Why? Plaster of Paris offers very poor, what is a poor conduction of the heat. So, here because we are mixing fine silica sand, conductivity of the mold will become high. Hence, faster solidification. Once there is faster solidification, mechanical properties of the casting would be improved. Now, better permeability, less chances for gas defects. Because we are mixing silica sand, what happens? Because of the silica presence of the silica sand, it leaves some pores somewhere, everywhere. So, because of this pores, hot gases that may arise during pouring or solidification will be escaping through the mold. Improved mechanical properties. But what are the limitations of this Antioch process? Poor sand recovery. So, that is the drawback of this process and process is expensive. Again, we have to mix the fine silica sand. It is not in the case of the sand, uh, sand casting process, the entire sand can be recovered. Only little sand is what is a burnt. So, there is a sand loss, but most of the times, most of the sand is reused, it is recovered. But here, the, the sand recovery is very poor and the process is expensive. We are mixing the plaster and that plaster cannot be used, the process is expensive. Now, these are the applications of the plaster molding process, means overall, overall. So, these are all the applications of plaster molding used to cast brass, bronze, aluminum, magnesium, manganese and their alloys. And remember, this cannot be used for making ferrous castings. Now, aircraft parts can be made using plaster molding, cams can be made, molds for plastic and rubber industries can be made and quick prototype parts can be made using plaster molding process and also not only that, art castings can be made using plaster molding process. And here we can see use of plaster molding in making statues for making art castings. So, initially one has to make the plaster mold, into that plaster mold one has to pour the molten metal, then we get the statues like this. Friends, in this lecture, we have learnt about two special casting process. Uh, one is the types of what is a evaporative pattern casting process. So, again this evaporative in this evaporative pattern casting process, we use the expanded polystyrene of or the foam or it is the thermocol is used as the pattern material. Now, this is broadly classified into three types. One is the last form process, next one full mold process and the ceramic shell. In the case of the last form process, the pattern is packed with the dry sand and this is widely used nowadays. Whereas, in the case of the full mold process, it is uh, uh, what say the pattern is supported with the green sand and in the case of the ceramic shell, it is a combination of the investment casting process. A thick ceramic shell is created around the polystyrene pattern similar to the investment casting process. So, that is how we have seen the evaporative pattern casting is superior than the 
last wax process or the investment casting process. Then we have seen the plaster molding. The plaster molding is what is classified into three types. One is the conventional plaster mold process, the second one is the foamed plaster process and the third one is the antioch process. In the case of the conventional plaster molding process, only plaster of Paris is used, plaster of Paris and water. Plaster of Paris and water, the proportion is 5 is to 8, 5 parts of plaster and 8 parts of water is used to make the slurry and that slurry is used to what is a flow around the pattern. Finally, we make the molds and we pour the molten metal. But the drawbacks of this process is that it has got the less strength and less permeability. In the case of the foamed what is a plaster process, the plaster is made similar to the first one, but here air bubbles are blown into the slurry, 50 percent is filled with the slurry. Then we this slurry along with the air bubbles is poured over the pattern. So, permeability is enhanced, but strength will be reduced in this case. So, in the third process again the efforts have been made to enhance the strength also, 50 percent of the ingredients will be fine silica sand and the rest of the 50 percent will be plaster and uh, what say other ingredients. In addition to this 50 percent additionally will be added, what is that 50 percent water, then the slurry will be made. So, in the case of the Antioch process because we are using fine silica sand, the strength is significantly enhanced. So, it can be used for making very big castings and also the permeability is improved. Mechanical properties are also improved as the solidification will be improved, so, as the solidification is faster in the case of the Antioch process. But the drawback of this plastering, plaster molding process is that the plaster is expensive and the plaster cannot be reused. So, that way the cost of the production goes up. So, with this we are completing the plaster molding process also. So, we will meet in the next class. Thank you.